Have you ever wondered how big the Geometry Dash Cube is? Like, what its actual physical dimensions are in real life? What? You haven't? <laughs> what are you, some kind of a normal person? <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, I wish that I was normal. But sometimes you just have to accept yourself and do all the math to figure out exactly how large the Geometry Dash Cube is. Doing so involves use of the kinematic equations here. These are pretty straightforward equations that describe the motion of an object when it is subject to a constant acceleration. If you took physics in high school, these should be familiar. The kinematic equation that we are most interested in today is this one right here. 1 half at squared plus v sub i t plus your initial position equals your final position. And here's why that equation in particular is of interest to us. If you slow down your Geometry Dash gameplay and actually pause it when you reach the top of your jump, you do have a horizontal velocity in the x direction, but that is actually independent of your vertical velocity in the y. And when you are actually at the very peak of your jump, you have a vertical velocity of exactly 0 meters per second. You are not moving. If we assume that Geometry Dash takes place in a gravitational field similar to that of Earth's, we can say our acceleration in the Y is equal to negative G, which has a value of negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And then when we hit the ground again, we will have a position of zero meters above the ground. So if we go back to our kinematic equation here and actually rearrange some of the terms, we now have that our final height minus half of the acceleration times the interval of elapsed time squared minus our initial velocity times that same time interval will give us our initial height. Assuming that gravity in Geometry Dash is the same as it is here on Earth, this turns into a plus one-half g t squared. Likewise, if we consider the very top of our jump to be the zero point in time, we have an initial velocity of zero meters per second, so this term goes away completely. And since the final height of our jump is the ground, we can replace this term with zero. That means that in our fully simplified form, the initial height of the cube, aka the height of the cube at the very top of the jump, is equal to one half times the gravity multiplied by the square of the time it actually takes for it to fall back to the ground. Of course, all of this is assuming that air resistance is negligible. That means that if we time how long it actually takes for the cube to fall, we can calculate how high it was in the first place. Here I have the footage slowed down to just 2% of its original speed, and you're going to have to excuse the slow frame rate that will add some uncertainty to our calculation, but it appears that it takes about 10 seconds at 2% speed for the cube to fully fall to the ground. 10 seconds at about 2% speed will be approximately 0.2 seconds. And I am confident in that measurement within an interval of plus or minus 0.04 seconds. And so, going back to our formula, after performing the proper uncertainty calculations, we find that our cube was at a height of about 0.196 meters above the ground. Great, now we know how high off the ground the cube was, but that doesn't really tell us anything about the cube itself. To fix that, all we need to do is measure the cube's height off the ground in terms of the cube. If I copy and paste the cube a few times, it appears to be about 2.11 cube heights off of the ground, give or take 5%. So, if the cube is 2.11 cube heights off of the ground, and it is also 19.6 centimeters off of the ground, that means that 2.11 cube heights is equivalent to 19.6 centimeters. So, after properly propagating the uncertainty again, we find that the cube has a side length of 9.3 centimeters, give or take 3.7 centimeters. 
That is an absolutely horrible range of uncertainty to have. And it mostly comes from the fact that I am using a version of Geometry Dash with a very low frame rate, so it's kind of hard to get a precise time measurement. If any of you guys watching have a fancier version of Geometry Dash and want to try and narrow that range down, I would love to see what you can do. Now, what's interesting about the level that I currently have up on screen, Clutterfunk, is that it has a small portal. And if you notice, the cube is actually moving the same way through the small portal section. It's jumping 2.11 cube heights and taking 0.2 seconds to fall down. Which means that this isn't just a shrinking portal. It is simultaneously changing the strength of gravity. So next time you play Geometry Dash and you go through a shrinking portal, just know that you're not only shrinking, but the strength of the gravitational force is also getting weaker. It drops from 9.8 meters per second squared to about 5.9 meters per second squared. So next time you play Electroman Adventures and you go through the portal, just remember, ah, I'm not only shrinking, but gravity is also about 60% its original strength. Yeah, I'm a nerd. I might need to go and see a doctor about that.